you know when you meet someone and they're just bubbly and fun then today you are gonna love this show i've got uh well we call her gabby gabriella bayer king she is on my show she is a marketing expert a lead generation uh superstar and um just just someone with such a lot of um well fun fun absolute fun we had a real giggle um doing this show today uh she chose an amazing song uh living on a prayer by bon jovi which i started off with so you can hear all about that but also we talked about things that are gonna help you with your business what to do to get leads and stuff like that so it's a really interesting show today so i hope you enjoy it and without any further ado here is gabby or gabriella um good afternoon so why did you choose that song i chose that song in ode to my hubby he absolutely loves bon jovi Perfect. So, Gabriella Bayer King, tell us a little bit about yourself. So, I'm a lead generation queen for BK Links. It's my baby, and I love helping people get more money for their business. Fantastic. And so, uh, hopefully, we're going to delve into that and find out some secrets and some top tips. Um, for sure. But 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 um first of all let's 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 tell the story how we met because that was hilarious wasn't it that Absolutely was a hilarious. very good chance encounter uh, well it was the best best bus bus trip i've ever had i tell you so um do you want to tell the story or shall i go for it no you go for it you go for it a bit, bit of different twist on it if you tell the story so i actually don't really know why i was invited to go to this event um i was just thinking of starting a business i didn't really even have a business name but i was invited to come over to this event i booked it and guess who was sitting next to me well no i wasn't to start off with was i yeah they moved me why did they move me well so so the thing is right um because it was this bus journey and it was it was, it was a 50 odd seat bus and there was about 30 of us do you reckon oh, and, yeah. so, and so we all sort of like pigged out and had a, a you know a double seat each because because we didn't know anybody and um i like to sit at the front and you sat right behind me and they said right need to partner up because we're going to do a quiz and so you come and sat next to me and we we, we did this little quiz and neither of us are, are very bright but guess who won the quiz <laughs> Um, yeah, so 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 now um, Gabriella thinks I'm really intelligent, but I was just lucky. And I think isn't that the thing with quiz? I was 100% lucky with some of the questions. I had no idea what we were doing. Hey, it, it doesn't matter. We were the brainiest people on the bus. <laughs> it says a lot for ever organized that trip, doesn't it? Definitely, and it was a great event. So that was, you know, it was all all around awesome. So I hadn't realized that you hadn't really started your business by then. No. Wow. No, no, so remember my, when you started asking me about my business, I felt like I was like pulling things left, right and center because I didn't really know what I was going to do. Wow. OK. And how long ago was that? A year ago. Was it really was it really 12 months ago? Yeah, that's incredible. So what have you done in the last 12 months then? I basically started with a business name and all the things that are not so necessarily so exciting. So registering the company and invoicing software and things like that emails and things like that and then started looking for what i'm actually going to do what am i going to sell and really dug deep on what are my awesome skills what comes easy to me that doesn't necessarily come easy to other people and people have often told me i'm very salesy but in a non-salesy way because i actually care and I thought, well, if I can mesh those two things together, that means I lead generate for people. All they need to do is sit down and sign the dotted line. Perfect. Because you've got a marketing background, haven't you? Yeah. And I did corporate for like, I don't know, 10, 12 years. So I knew how big business works. And in essence, all can be used for any type of industry, for any type of size of business. We all want to grow and we all want to make more money. So I just thought, let's use it and go with it. And by January, I had my first client. Perfect. Perfect. And so you've you've grown and how's the business going? It's 
super, super successful. It's really unimaginable to think that I had no clue about a year ago. And now I'm here with you. It's for me, it's, it's a pat on the back, but it's also super rewarding to see how businesses get value out of it. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Right. I'm going to dig into that, but I normally go into LinkedIn to start off with. And and, and so, so we, 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 we do a bit on LinkedIn. Um, so I want to know why you love LinkedIn or what we you know what why are you using LinkedIn um number one is it mixes business with a little bit of social and a bit of personality it's not just um showing what you're doing every day but it's also not just business and that's very much like me I show a lot of my personality through my business so that's why I like the platform it allows me to do that it allows me to be me but still be businessy yeah, no, absolutely. And um, how often do you post on LinkedIn? Ideally once a week. I have obviously my business um, LinkedIn and then my own personal. So ideally I'm I'm posting once a week as a minimum. But then obviously if there's an event like this or if another client has something going on, then I'll repost. So it might be more than that. But as a consistency once a, once a week, I see Haley on the comments already. Yeah, so Haley Haley was in Haley was in um, nice nice and early. Um, two of your favorite LinkedIn people. That's lovely, Haley. And um, yeah, she is she is an absolute inspiration, isn't she, um, Haley? And uh, you know, I've been looking forward to this show for a while. So, uh, but I hadn't realized that that you you weren't running a business when we first met. So um, you obviously can talk the talk. <laughs> Um, well, so, I thought it was super clear. That's why I'm surprised. I thought it, you know, because I was like left, right and center. I was thinking, oh, well, I've, at least he likes my ideas. <laughs> no, absolutely. And you've obviously done something with it, which is absolutely superb. Um, so with, with LinkedIn, then um, you're posting every week. What sort of mistakes do you see um, other people on LinkedIn doing? Just posting, not engaging. Not right. OK. A community. Um, it's not sufficient just to post. And also it doesn't really show anything about you. Um, like you do, you just comment on our responses and, um, bring people in, ask them further questions. That's actually what helps the algorithm and helps other human beings know what you're like. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I don't worry about the algorithm and I don't teach the algorithm. I teach, I teach personality and, 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 and basically, when we were sat on that bus, we were chatting about absolutely everything. Yeah. And it's, it's, that's what you do. We didn't talk, we, we spoke a little bit about business, but we talked about, we talked about all kinds of different things and, and, and that's what you do on LinkedIn and that's what resonates and that's what gets people engaged. And so many people are just backward at coming forward, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. It's a bit, dry you know it's like do you just want toast no everyone puts butter and everything else on top of it so if you see dry toast you kind of pass it by you don't really engage with it so what would you put on your toast then Gabriella? that wasn't on the list of questions was it <laughs> <laughs> so my ideal toast is weird okay i so knew it I would like, be i knew it would be i like the sides of the bread, I call them the bum bits. Apparently that's not kosher. I don't know what people call them, but there's only two in a bread loaf. The crust. Yeah. Some people call it the, the best bits. Some people call it the knobby. Oh, okay. So mm. we're on the same, you know, on the same vein. Yeah. So I like to put peanut butter on one side and butter on the other side. What butter and butter? And peanut butter. Yeah. And no no jelly. No. Okay. <laughs> toasted. And then you put that in a sandwich toaster or something, or or, or, it's, or it's a or it's a piece of toast. Yeah, I put one piece of toast in the toaster, and then yep. one side has butter, and then the other side has peanut butter. And depending on how I want to bite it, because your tongue is obviously going to be the first taste bud. Hang on, you've you've buttered both sides. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just knew that this was going to be a bit of a weird <laughs> interview today. Okay, I was thinking that. Yeah, you've just blown my mind. Yeah, but so when you put it down on your plate, you so can't you get it back up. You just hold it. Well, you just... when you drink something, you hold it. How do you butter the second side? 
in, in, in midair, in midair. So those of you listening on the podcast, she just showed me. That's that's weird. Um, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Haley loves you even more. Yay! <laughs> so, uh, and, uh, hi, hi, Pavel. He didn't think we'd be talking toast today, did you? Um, do you use any other social media, Gabri? Um, I have Instagram, but more as a having the account rather than using it. I feel either use it or you know you can have it as open the account but if you're not going to post consistently if you're not going to engage consistently then it's probably best not to engage with it so i just have it as an open just in case i want to use it but i haven't really delved into it mm. so so basically you're a, a one trick pony focused on linkedin mm. which which is one of the other things that i i try, try to teach people because if you start doing other different things you 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 you're a jack of all trades master of none so yeah perfect um, and it's too difficult you know small businesses really don't have the time to do all the learn all the platforms and try and post on all of them no it, it's it's impossible absolutely impossible i was i, I did a show i don't know if it was last week or the week before um and i had a load of linkedin experts and one guy he said he he's on 40 different social media platforms i didn't even think that, yeah well i know i don't think he's effectively Def definitely that's not. Hard bit. It's not just about posting, as we've just pointed out. Uh, so how do you, how are you effective on all of them? Yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? Um, so we've got Mark. Do you know Mark? Yes, I, I know Mark. Mark. It's Hi, not just Mark. her ideas, her personality it makes her stand out. She is so bubbly and engaging. Yeah, we know that. That's why she's on the show. <laughs> <Woo -hoo>! <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, last question on LinkedIn. Do you get business from what you do on LinkedIn? 100%. And that's the tips and tricks I teach other people like you do. I learn from you and I learn from all kinds of different people, but also by experience, learning what works and what doesn't work. Absolutely. And 100% business can be had just using LinkedIn. There we go. My work is done. My work is done. <laughs> so tell me, all right, a little bit more about your business. Who's your ideal client? Ideal client, small to medium business trying to figure out how to grow. So maybe it's a situation where they're saturated um, and they want to grow, but don't really know how to. They don't really know how to use LinkedIn. They don't really know whether on-site events, so like a networking event is worth it for them. Maybe focused on their industry, but haven't really brainstormed on how we grow, not just on their industry. So in terms of categories like i have a lot of packaging companies because that was my background in corporate but it does the widget doesn't matter at the end of the day the tricks are the same yeah and and so you actually generate leads for these business owners do, yes. do, you, do you do it or do you teach them to do it so i have two you know two types of clients some clients say I'd say 90% think, oh, I'll just do your tips and tricks. And then a few weeks down the line, they think, actually, it's easier if you do it. <laughs> I don't have the time. And if again, if you're not going to be consistent, it's not magic. You've got to put the work in. So yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. then take over um, and I'll even do the telephone calls. Um, I'll go to their events and do the networking for them. So I become their brand effectively. And so, so that is quite intensive for you. So you, I guess you don't have too many clients. No, it's, I say an, an event can be super recharging, but at the same time, it's very energy output kind of situation for me. So, you know, three or four clients a month is more than enough. Yeah. And so, so what, what sort of it, cause I've just been on a bit of a tour doing a few different events, um, uh, in, in the accountancy space. Um, is it worth paying money to exhibit at some of these events or, you know, how, how do we work out which ones are the best? So there is a, you know, a slight trial and error. If you've never done an event and your company has never, ever exhibited, then we kind of have to look at what you're selling the top, um, events for that particular um, widget and then think is the output like the return on investment so some events are super expensive NEC um, Excel can be very very expensive how are you going to get 
it out of it is is going to be hard to test. So I say start small. You know, what, what do you have locally that is already big in those top 10? There's going to be something in Exeter. There's going to be something in Bristol. Um, and then also, what kinds of people are you going to take? If you're a business owner and you're, let, let's say you're techie, and you're not very salesy or very people orientated, it might fall flat. <laughs> There's an element of not just exhibiting, but it's again, like not just posting. We're, we're going with a mission. Okay. I can just see this right now. <laughs> so I'm this, I'm this techie person and I've created this widget and it's really good. And I'm just thinking of exhibiting. Um, people aren't going to engage with me because I'm quite dry and technical. But if I put you on my stand. Great at describing what you do, but everything else is a bit. Mm. So, so I can hire you to come on my stand and you'll be there and you'll 100%. talk to everyone. Oh my goodness. Be bees lined a honeypot, wouldn't it? <laughs> so for a lot of companies, they think that that's like great return on investment because I soak up all that information I then up there lead generating and creating all these meetings. By that point, the person's already a hot lead or the company that's, you know, we're flogging to. And then all they're doing is kind of explaining the techie bits that I, I'm not going to be able to do, but that's a salesperson. They're not supposed to know all the ins and outs of that product. Okay. So may, maybe I'm a, I'm a bit smaller and I, I can't warrant going to an exhibition. What other ways could you help me get some more leads, please, Gabriella? So definitely go on to LinkedIn, um, consistently post, but as we were saying, add some sprinkle of personality. Even if you're techie, you like something. You like Lego, you like a particular movie, a particular so music, food. You like something other than work. Yep, 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 yep. And share that. And then easily you'll start seeing that people are gonna be driven to those things add them to your feed don't forget to add those people <laughs> who are watching you and interested in you and don't be afraid to ask the question are they interested in your services it's it, we're all selling something there's no embarrassment on saying would you be keen on having a chat it's you know 15 minute discovery call that there's no pressure for them to say no so don't be afraid to ask and and that's the thing, isn't it? I think people are afraid to ask. Um, I, I I had a call with somebody yesterday um, and um, I did I put it in my post today? Yes, I did. I did. Um, so on my post today, I shared a photo of a, a board outside a shop and the board says, if this board is outside, we're open and serving food. It's just brilliant marketing, isn't it? So simple. And the comments I've had on that are, are excellent. But that was prompted because I was speaking to this um, lady and, and she was saying that, that you know, she, she how, how can she get more leads and stuff like that? And I said to her, I said, do your existing clients know that you want more clients? No. <laughs> so well, tell them, tell them, don't, don't be afraid. Because the thing is, right, here I am working in my shed, helping people with LinkedIn, do my clients know that I want more clients? Yes, they do. All right. But because they've been helped by me and they like working with me, they're going to turn around and say, oh my goodness. Yes. Go and work with Ashley because da, 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 da. And, and, and that's the thing. If, if you don't tell people, they won't know. And that's, yeah. the, that's the, the first, the first, you know, thing that you should be doing. Uh, exactly what Mark says. Um, I thought I'd hit show. Um, couldn't agree more. You should never be afraid of asking for business. But I would guess Most 60, 70, don't. 80% of people don't. No, probably and sometimes probably there's an assumption that people know. Yeah. Why would they know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and again, the, the other thing is a lot of people do stuff for free um, to, you know, get some goodwill, show people what they can do. You know, this is the, the the carrot or whatever you want to call it. And some people think that that's all they ever do. And so like, I didn't know I could buy your services. Um, I, I don't, I don't say enough, but behind me is my book. Uh, so I have written a book. So if anyone wants to um, know a little bit more, then I, I, I have a book that you can buy. Um, but again, how many times do I tell people 
not often and sometimes enough. Sometimes I find that it could be cultural. So some clients will tell me, oh, I'm then self promoting. It comes off as, you know, selfish or, you know, are people going to be, you know, thinking this is weird? And I'm thinking, no, that is what you do. That's your sales. You're promoting what you do. And when you win an award, you show everyone that you won the award. It's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But in the UK, we're not we're not keen on that. Now, tell me, that doesn't sound like a, a, an English accent. So where are you from? So I was born in Venezuela. Yep. I went to undergraduate in Florida. And then I've been in the UK for 16 years. I know it doesn't sound it, but I, I have been here longer than anywhere else. Right. OK. But you grew up you grew up in Venezuela. You grew, you grew up in Venezuela and did a little bit in America. Yeah. So right, although okay. I sound very American, that's where I stayed the shortest. That's that's incredible. OK. Yeah. And, and again, culturally in, in America, it's all about sell, sell, sell. And, 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 it, and it, selling is a respected industry in, in America, isn't it? It is very much so. It's, yeah. It's a skill and some people have a very natural knack. So I would say I naturally like to sell, but it can also be learned. You know, you don't have to know how to do it. You can learn it and it's a muscle. Once you use it a few times, it feels more natural. But yeah, culturally in America, we all get our Mickey ears. That's what I call it. You know, we, we, we know what the Mickey ears mean and we're proud and we show them off. And here we're a bit like, hmm, I don't know. <laughs> Preserved, I think, is the word for the UK, isn't it? Okay, let's call it that. <laughs> so what, what, if I'm reserved then, and I, and I don't like shouting about it, what, what, what's the first sort of thing I can be thinking about? What can I start doing to be a little bit more Gabby? Um, that, was Gabby not Gob that was Gabby, not Gobby. <laughs> yeah, I get that a lot. <laughs> I say what have been, in the last few months, the customers you've had, have said these top things are really great about you or about your business. What are they? Um, personality. Um, you got me all these general, you know, or these leads. Um, whatever they may be, it's going to be fresh in your mind because that's what people tell you. So now that's what you shout to other people <laughs> about because it's easy. They've told you about you. They've showed evidence that you're a good worker. So now shout it out. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's a that's a brilliant tip because it's hard to actually turn around to someone and say, I'm good. But if you turn around and go, oh, I've been working with Gabby and she said I'm good and she said this, this and this, then that's a lot easier than saying I it can do this, this like and this. someone's already told you, so it, you're not self-proclaiming in any way. It's almost like a recommendation of a, of a restaurant. It feels like, oh, I'd like to go because so-and-so told me it's a really good place. Yeah. Rather than I saw the menu and I liked it. Yeah, sure. Sure. Or or, or, or going and watching that movie or, or listening to that song or And the something. more people you hear it from, the more you're going to gravitate towards it. The same as social media, the same as on a show. The more people hear about you, the more people they gravitate to you. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, okay. So I'm now coming out of my shell. I'm now doing bit more on social media i'm thinking of going to events what else can i be doing to get more leads you are setting up those meetings what meetings you're asking for the business and then once someone shows a little bit of interest you don't just ignore them or pretend like they don't exist you then book that meeting Okay, so so what's what's your top tips for booking a meeting then, and, and what sort of what, what sort of meeting is this, and why do I do this? Um, so you do realize I know all of this. I'm just trying to make this more interesting and, totally. and for other people. I know you're the expert <laughs> anyway. So, um, booking a meeting is all about that first thirty minutes, maybe fifteen minutes. You're really gonna get to know that other person. Are they really interested? They're not. Um, so the way you book the meeting is be totally proactive say super glad you're you know looking forward to meeting me what about this date date and time is a good clencher and a good hook if you leave it to other people to think about everyone's busy yep. nobody wants to look at their calendar 
And is this is this where something like Calendly or Acuity or something come you come in? You my a, mind. A bit of scheduling they have software. Access to it. Yeah, that's it's got to be one of the first things you sign up for when you open up your business, isn't it? Definitely. Um, people having access to quote unquote your calendar, um, and I, you know, sometimes clients say, "Oh, what if they book and I'm not available?" That that's okay. They booked, and now you can go back and say, "Sorry, something has come up." That's okay. Right. They've already booked, so they're interested. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They've given you their maybe maybe um, a phone number, but definitely an email address. Um, and and depend it and depending on how you've set that up, you can actually put some questions in there as well, can't you? One hundred percent. And Pavel yeah. has just said something. Yeah, uh, love that. Nobody likes calendars. No, they don't. And I still can't believe it that some people sort of like say, "Well, I'm free this day and this day. Is that any good?" And I, well, just this, here's my calendly link. Go and find something that suits. Yeah, find yeah. find something that suits, and um, let me know. And you know, I'll have the notification. It's easy. So definitely, people don't necessarily want to look at their calendars either. So if you give them a time of day, then it's much easier for them to laser focus on it. Also, whatever you put on your message regarding what you do, they'll laser focus on, are you available this day? Voila. Oh, perfect. Absolutely perfect. The other, the other thing there is another top, top tip for you using your calendar is just block out a few days so that you know maybe a Thursday and a Friday is your day for talking to new people. Um, and, and that, you know, that way you're really focused on those two days and that becomes a lot easier, doesn't it? Definitely. Don't oversaturate. If it's your first few goes, don't oversaturate your day. Cause I do hear like what happens if I have three meetings, it m could be energy releasing. So maybe don't saturate yourself, start with one and pick it up as you go. Perfect. Perfect. Um, Gabriella, we've we've almost finished, which is which is a real shame. Um, but yeah, it's been a delightful guest. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you um, so much. And come back in another year and tell us how you're getting on. Um, how can people work with you? Um, find me on LinkedIn. You know, search my name, search BK Links. Um, <laughs> gotta run, says Haley. And all my contact information Canonly is on my LinkedIn. So you can either book a meeting or email me or call me, what, you know, whichever suits you best. Fantastic. Um, and I've got one more question for you. What advice would you give your 16 year old self, Gabriella? Don't worry about being emotional. I am super empathetic and super emotional. And I used to worry about it, seeing other people be so cold. I tell her, don't worry about it. It's going to actually get you where you want to go. Those special skills are actually important. Perfect. I love that. Um, thank you very much for being my guest today. Um, Mark, thank you. It, 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 I, I enjoyed it as well. I always enjoy these shows. But Gabriella, you've been, you've been lovely today. Uh, thanks ever so much indeed. And we'll see you next time. See you soon. Here we go. Another podcast in the bag. I've been Ashley Leeds. You've been wonderful. Thank you so much for listening. If you want to hear more, then please subscribe and I will see you again another day. You can find me on LinkedIn if you want to catch up. If you fancy being a guest on one of my shows, I do live shows on LinkedIn twice a week, but I also plan to do some real podcasts uh, where we just do audio and probably record it to go on the YouTube channel. And we can talk about absolutely anything in those. So whatever you want to do, get in touch. And thank you for listening. You get out what you put in. Never gonna lose, never gonna win. Long as you're happy, you're always gonna grin. You get out what you put in. You get